welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be back today and with the live studio audience. Pan to them, please. And also we have the construction workers outside my window who are fixing a gas line. Shut the window, but if you hear any clanking, that is what is going on. My name is Lauren. Welcome back to my channel, Elements of Style, where I talk about anything from fashion to food. Anything just fits the lifestyle. I am based in Los Angeles, but I'm originally from Dallas. And yeah, I'm excited you're here today. Let's jump in. So my last video that I posted about a week ago was actually on a Goldie denim and if it's worth it, how it fits and all of that jazz. And I love my Goldie jeans. If you don't wanna go back and watch that video or read that blog post, the headline is, is that I do think they're worth the money and they're a great pair of jeans. However, I do get a lot of questions asking if there is a more budget friendly option. So today I'm gonna do just that. I wanted to make this video because I do love my Goldies, but I am aware that their price points are higher. Their shorts are around $124 and their jeans are around $178 or $188. I completely understand why people would like a more budget friendly option. However, I wanted to share some disclaimers. A Goldie jeans are 100% cotton and cotton is a very expensive crop. That's in general, it's expensive in general, not comparing it to any other fibers. However, most jeans today on the market are stretchy and have some sort of synthetic fiber like spandex, elastane, tensile, those types of things. And man-made fibers are a lot cheaper than cotton. So that is contributing to the cost. And those stretchy jeans may have some cotton in them. They're not 100% cotton. And so that is what you wanna look for when looking for a dupe or more budget friendly version of a Goldie jeans. To go back further, which I did mention in my last video, Levi's, that's what I have here. <laughs> Levi's are the original creators of denim and the only way for something to be true denim is to be 100% cotton. So today on the market, you'll find lots of jeans, but not all of them are denim. Denim is only 100% cotton and usually has a button fly instead of a zipper fly. While I am comparing Levi's to Goldie today, because they're both 100% cotton and one has a significantly lower price point, I also thought it was fair to compare a Goldie's to Levi's because a Goldie's are literally inspired by the original denim, which are Levi's. Before I get into what makes them different and how I compare the two, I wanted to talk a little bit about similarities. So like I said, they both are 100% cotton. They both have jeans that aren't 100% cotton and that have a stretchy aspect if that's what you're looking for. But for the sake of this video, I'm only gonna be talking about the 100% cotton product because that's what you're here for. They are both based out of California. Levi's is in San Francisco and Goldie is in LA. The bulk of their production are made overseas or using fabrics from overseas. However, they both have a small collection of things that are produced just in the United States. I've mentioned it before, but the way jeans are made, whether it be the chemicals, the washes, or even the dry times, they have a devastating impact on our earth. They both have programs that are supposed to help in those efforts. I'd say from what I've read, a Goldie does a little bit more, but they both do have sustainability efforts if that's something that you are looking for. Here's an example of Levi's with their waterless tag where they uh, mentioned that they're using less water to make these. What I wanna talk about that is similar is that they both are sized the same, for me at least from what I've researched by trying on a bunch of pairs of jeans. I wear a size 26 in both shorts and I wear a 27 in both jeans. Do you think that they are true to size within the brand? If you've never tried them on before, I would suggest that you try on the shorts in your same size that you wear in stretchy jeans and that you size up in the jeans. So I wear a size 26 in Madewell jeans that are stretchy if that's a good reference point for you. And then that means I wear a 26 in the Goldie shorts and the Levi shorts and a 27 in the Goldie and Levi's jeans. I will put links in the comments below, but just so you're aware of the specific products that I'm comparing today, I'm comparing the Levi's 501 skinny jeans and the can't touch this wash, which are $98 and the Levi's 501 original shorts in the Luxor heat wash and those are $69.50. I'll go into them specifically but first I just wanted to say like my beef with Levi's and what makes them harder to shop in my opinion and just so you're aware my background is apparel merchandising and so I'm used to style numbers and organizing all of that jazz and making sure they make sense, especially for the consumer. So it could be I'm looking at this from like an insider perspective, but 
It's just hard to shop their products because they use the same names all over the place and then have different styles, making it just hard to shop and even search what you're looking for. The easiest way for me to search Levi's was find the wash I liked and then go from there. For example, they have 501 skinny jeans offered in several different washes on one URL and then have another pair on another. When I read the description, there's no apparent differences and sometimes there's a price difference. For example, in the shorts that I'm comparing, they are listed as premium under the description title, but I, there's another pair that are $20 cheaper and also go by the name of Levi's original 501 shorts. And actually I thought I would like that pair better, but they were out of my size. So I will link those below too, cause they're, I don't know what makes them different. They don't do a good job of explaining what makes them different. Yeah, but that, that's my main beef with Levi's and shopping them. The other thing regarding their website is that their e-commerce site isn't where I would shop their products because they don't have that big of an assortment. For example, the jeans I'm gonna show you today, I actually can't find on their website. I found some that have the same name and need the same wash, but they don't have the same holes and cuts, which is what makes them really cute. So if I were to make a suggestion to Levi's, I would just say, get your naming system down and make it easier for people to understand what exact product they're actually shopping. Okay, let's get down to the review. The Levi's 501 skinny jeans and the can't touch this wash. Drum roll please. These are a great swap for the Goldie Jamie jeans and they're almost $100 less. These come in at $98 and the Jamie jeans are $178. I will say there are some differences and overall, I do think that a Goldies are the better product and that's shown in the price. You're paying for what you get in this case specifically, but if you're looking to save money or maybe you have the money and just don't wanna spend that much on jeans, these are a great buy. Here's some caveats. This fabric is more stiff than the Goldies. It's not as soft. I think maybe it'll get soft over time, but the Goldies are very much worn in and these are stiff and not as comfortable. The other thing that I noticed is that the leg room in these are pretty small. I know they're skinny jeans, but just comparing to them to the Goldies I tried on, the calf room specifically is kind of tight. I don't necessarily have to shop for jeans that need to accommodate my calf muscles, but I, I have friends who do, and so I don't know that these will work for you if you have some killer calves. The other thing that's not a deal breaker is that these are tighter because there's less they're not as loose of the fabrics thicker than the goldies and so <laughs> the pockets are kind of hard to push down in once you have them buttoned so again not a big deal at all just wanted to mention it my little hack for that is push in your pockets before you button them so put on your jeans push in the pockets then button them and you're good to go they won't come out again while you're wearing them the other thing that in comparing these to the goldies i did think the goldie fit was better the silhouette was better specifically in the crotch it's not a noticeable difference but because i was comparing them and because i do have a sewing background and an apparel background i did notice it and wanted to call it out i still have these i still like these so it wasn't a deal breaker for me just something that i did notice Overall, I think these are a great pair of jeans. I've had people mistake them for a Goldies and mistake them for even a higher end pair like mother or girlfriend. So a great dupe and it saves you money. Okay, so comparing the Levi's shorts, I don't have them because I returned them. I did not like them is the headline on that. I, just a backstory though, I've been wearing a Goldies for over three years. So I know that I like them. I know that they are good but I just wanted to try something cheaper just in case I did end up liking them and to save me money. So the 501 original jean shorts that I tried on in this video are in the Luxor heat wash. They come in at 69.50 and the Goldies are 124. So I understand why people want to find a cheaper version, but I have not found one that I absolutely love as much as the Goldies. They weren't uncomfortable. If I'm comparing the jeans, I'd say the Goldie jeans are definitely more comfortable than the Levi's, but obviously that didn't stop me because I still have the Levi's. But in the shorts, they weren't less comfortable. It was the cut that I didn't like. So you'll see in the photos, if you look at them, uh, I have them in my blog post, um, which I will link in the comments below. But for some reason, the Levi's shorts were shorter and they did an awkward like angled cut to where they were shorter in the front over like my thigh and longer in the back. And while I appreciate the longer in the back, I don't want extra short in the front. That's 
that just doesn't look good. Actually, it looked flattering, but like, I don't want that. Like I felt self-conscious in them and I don't want to feel that way. I want to feel good. Again, I actually think I would have liked the $20 cheaper pair better. I think the cut looks a little bit different. And so that would be my next step is to try the non-premium Levi's 501 jean shorts in, it's actually called a different wash as well, but in the Luxor baked light wash. Those looked good and I'll link them below, but I can't speak to them as I haven't tried them on. All right, so down to a Goldie, we've got the Jamie Classic High Rise jeans in the Arrival wash and the, in the Parker Vintage Cutoff shorts in the Swap Meet wash. I've said it before, but I 100% think that Goldies are worth the money. They are actually, I think, kind of a steal if you're already spending a lot on denim. Like I mentioned, the mother and the girlfriend brands are more expensive than a Goldie and I think they look similar. So you're saving money in that aspect, but I do understand that they are a higher priced denim. It isn't always the case that when you spend more money, it's a higher quality product, but I do think that's the case in regard to a Goldie. Their fabric is so soft. It's a lot more comfortable, a lot more worn in. I think that the silhouette and the fit is better specifically in the crotch area. The specifics regarding the Jamie Jean, that is my favorite of the Agoldi denim. I also really like the Riley. Uh, yeah, I really like them. I think they fit well, they're comfortable, they're soft, they wear well. I can go on and on. Remember, I do think that if you're looking to save money, I do approve Levi's 501 Classic Skinny Jeans and the Can't Touch This Wash as a good budget-friendly option. The now on to the review of the Parker shorts in Swap Meet. Like I said, I've been wearing these for a while. This is my second pair of the denim shorts. I've also had a black pair, but I recently got a different size. These are awesome. I previously to these, I wore the one teaspoon style, which is similar, but the fabric's not as soft and they are sh a shorter product. And I just wanted like a longer style that was still cut off. Not too long, not too short, you know, like baby bears porridge. <laughs> I wear these at least once a week and did so with the same pair for over three years. So they hold up, their quality is great. Highly approve, worth the money and worth the splurge of $124 in my opinion. Like I mentioned, I do have the pictures on my blog if you wanna see them side by side, but I also took video walking in them. So I'll play that next and put some details to the sides. That's pretty much it. I hope this comparison was helpful. Just a couple things to keep in mind. One, cotton is expensive. It's gonna be more expensive than not. And there might be some jeans that look like a Goldie's. I know American Eagle has a cute pair, but if you look at the fiber contents, they aren't 100% cotton. And that is what is gonna give you that drape and wear and vibe of these type of jeans that you're looking for. If you need to save money, I will also link the American Eagle ones below, but remember they do have some stretch in them and are not gonna fit the same. The other thing that I just want to remind you is that 100% cotton jeans are not as comfortable as stretchy jeans. Don't, don't think that they are. Get that in your head before you buy these and think, wow, these aren't comfortable. I'm not saying that a Goldies are the most comfortable jeans in the world. I just wear them because I have, I like the vibe and the look of them. And they also happen to be the most comfortable 100% cotton jeans I've tried on. But stretchy jeans, my Madeball stretchy jeans, way more comfortable. If you have found a good budget-friendly alternative to a Goldie jeans, let me know because I would love to try them out, test them out, and share with others so that they can save some money too. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I try to put out a new video every week. It appears that my video has put them to sleep. And so let me know if you liked it. If you want to continue following along with me, you can follow me on Instagram at elmolinas and on my blog, elementsofstyle.com. Thanks and have a good day.